Hi, I'm Elizabeth Williamson. I teach ninth grade English at Ruston High School in Lincoln Parish. As an educator, I'm most passionate about helping students grow and watching them gain confidence as they learn and master skills and concepts, developing language and interpersonal skills that will benefit them throughout life. The curriculum used for this course is the Louisiana Guidebooks 2.0. We are currently in the Romeo and Juliet unit. In this lesson, you will see students reading the poem, A Poison Tree, identifying literary elements such as connotative diction, tone, imagery, and extended metaphor, as well as determining theme. We have previously discussed similar themes in our anchor text and will make those connections which students will express in writing in the form of an abbreviated literary analysis task. My students represent a variety of learning styles. Some are advanced learners and some need more support and guidance. Groups are organized to encourage peer support and you'll notice me mentioning readers, which is one of the jobs I assign in my groups. Each person in a group has a particular job which comes with responsibilities for contributing to the group. This is one of my favorite lessons in the unit as it allows students to work through some very difficult literary elements, build confidence, and work with others as they do so. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, before we get started, remember that your paper person should pick up a paper from over here at the front table. Make sure you have one of those papers and take out your paper from yesterday as well. Those are the only two things that you are going to need. Those are the only two things that you're going to need out. We are going to skip independent reading and we'll talk about that in just a second once we get settled. Your paper from yesterday is a look at a scene from Act 5, Scene 1, that's going to tie in with the poem that we're doing today. So again, you have two papers out on your desk. The new one that you got today is on top. Everything else goes underneath your desk. Okay? Everything else goes underneath your desk. All ready? Y'all with me? Let's go. So today we're going to closely read a poem titled A Poison Tree and make some thematic connections to the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. Brandon, you do not need your Chromebook today, so you can put that away. You can do that later. Let's do this right now. Okay. All right. Make sure you put your name on that paper. So we're going to closely read a poem, A Poison Tree, and make some thematic connections to Romeo and Juliet. As we annotate through that poem, we're going to be looking for some figurative language and how that helps connect to those themes from the play. Once we have worked through that poem and answered some questions that go along with it, tomorrow we'll be working on a mini LAT. What does LAT stand for? Literary analysis task. So we're getting some practice writing once we get done working through our poem. All right, so let's think back to the play before we dig into our poem. In Act 5, Scene 1 of Romeo and Juliet, we're at the Capulet Feast. There's a big party. And who's there that's not supposed to be? Romeo, right? Who sees him? Tybalt sees him. And how does Tybalt feel about it? He wants to kill him. He's pretty angry that a Capulet has had the audacity to show his face, or excuse me, a Montague has had the audacity to show his face in the Capulet home. So he swears that he's going to get revenge. And in Act 2, we learn that Tybalt has sent a letter to Romeo's father's house challenging him to a duel. Did Tybalt let his anger go? No, he's acting on it. He's letting it grow. He's letting it fester. And all of this is going on in the background because Romeo has absolutely no idea that Tybalt even knew he was at the party, much less that he's angry with him. So that's kind of the themes that we're going to be looking at today in our poem. So on the board, I've got some instructions for us. First, you're going to listen as I read that poem aloud to you. And then in your groups, as a fluency exercise, you will read that out loud to each other. So where are my readers in my groups? All right. 
So once we get to the fluency part, you will start your groups out. And as you read with your groups, what are you going to do? Write your thoughts. What do you think is happening in this poem? All right, so for our first read through, follow along on your paper as I read it to you. A poison tree. I was angry with my friend. I told my wrath, my wrath did end. I was angry with my foe. I told it not, my wrath did grow. And I watered it in fears, night and morning with my tears. And I sunned it with smiles and with soft deceitful wiles. And it grew both day and night till it bore an apple bright. And my foe beheld it shine and he knew that it was mine. And into my garden stole when the night had veiled the pole. In the morning glad I see my foe outstretched beneath the tree. Readers, take over. Start your groups reading aloud and write down your thoughts about the poem. Next reader, next stanza. Yes, ma'am. Can you get us another paper like this? We miss learning the game. Oh, I yeah, sure. I want to do it. I want to do it. Okay, so what are your initial thoughts? The painter is the person who's angry. Okay, person. They want their anger go and they keep that. Okay, I like that. Um, I, I was thinking that, like, when it said that We're gonna we're gonna dig into that a little bit more, but I like where you're going, Mercy. All right, so I'm not gonna ask you whole group what your impressions were. I was able to hear some of those as I went around. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next part. We're gonna annotate through the poem together, kind of step by step. So if you will take your poem and a pencil first. All right. And there are some words here that we might need to define or at least clarify in order to understand what's taking place. So as I write, you write, and you're going to help me come up with what I need to add to the paper. So in our first stanza, we have the word wrath. Put a box around that. What is wrath? Who can tell me that? Raise your hand. Anger. Anger. Okay. Okay, now didn't we see the word angry in the first line? So now we have another word for anger. What about the word foe? What does that mean? Enemy. Okay. Let's go to our second stanza. Line eight. We have the words deceitful and wiles. Does anybody know what deceitful means? Like if you're deceitful with someone, Sadie? You're lying. You're not being truthful, right? So for deceitful, we're going to say lying. What about wiles? Does anybody know what that is? What did you say, that? This might take place over a period of time, but this would mean something a little bit different. It's a little tricky. So I'm going to ask you a question, and this is the connection that we were able to make in the last couple of classes that worked. So has anyone ever seen the Roadrunner cartoon? 
Okay. Raise your hand if you've seen Road Runner. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, great. Wiley Coyote is always trying to get the Road Runner by doing what? Chasing him, trapping him. He's trying to trick him, right? He tries to trick him so that he can catch him. Wiley Coyote is named that because he's tricky, because wiles are tricks. So soft, deceitful wiles, these are lying tricks. Okay, comparing two things that are not alike, right? Comparing two unlike things. We are now looking for a comparison being made in this poem. This poem is about his anger with his enemy, right? So with our red highlighter, we're going to go into the second stanza, and it says, he watered it. Can you water your anger? No, you cannot. So we're getting into the metaphor here, and I want you with your group to continue underlining with your red highlighter as far as the metaphor goes in the poem, and then we'll talk about what's being compared. For this one, she sent it's like a extended metaphor, it's going to be more than one line. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have to be more than that. So I was thinking all the way down this one. Okay. So you can't water your anger, you can't sun anger, so it's comparing it to something else, right? Okay. And it grew both day and night. So she's down into the next stanza. Okay, keep it going. Can anger do that? Right. So keep that comparison going. All right, what we got? Okay, so what do you think his anger is being compared to? Mm -hmm. Anger can't grow apples, right? What does? A tree. A tree. So his anger is compared to a tree. An apple tree bears apples. Now look for what the result of his anger is and keep that metaphor going. Okay, what we got over here? All right, and it grew both day and night until what happened? Until the boy. Okay, because anger can't grow an apple, right? Mm -hmm. But what can? A tree. So we're seeing more of the comparison here, right? Okay, so keep it going until it shows a better, a clearer picture of what his anger results in. Okay. Overall, the lesson objectives were met. By walking around the classroom and actively monitoring, I was able to see whether students understood the metaphor, which was the main thing I wanted them to grasp that would then help them understand the theme of the poem and connect it to our anchor text. Students were able to identify appropriate tone words and connect those with the theme. They were also able to construct relevant thematic statements. They'll use this information in the next lesson to express their understanding in writing. As an educator, flexibility is key. We're always gauging what our students need and how we can support them. This particular week was full of energy and excitement due to the upcoming football state championship game. So I made a few modifications to help students remain engaged during class. Plus, this was something that would help guide all learners through the annotation process, setting clear expectations for their outcome. So normally, I give students a list of devices to annotate for and allow for a little more self-paced work through the text, continuing to walk around the room and monitor, of course. For this particular day, I paced it out a little differently, giving students only one thing to focus on at a time, and I think this went well, and I'll keep this as an option for the future.